Hello everyone, Thought Llama 3 here to discuss chapter 99 of Black Clover titled Family. One more until chapter 100. So the chapter begins with uh, Asta, who's now in his demon form being possessed by the uh, Witch Queen. Uh, you know, basically us hearing the commands again to cut down all of his friends. And the Witch Queen decides that the first one Asta will cut down is Noel, or as she calls her, Little Miss Royalty. Um, the, so as uh, Asta wants to do it, the Witch Queen states that for someone of the Clover's royal family to die by his sword, I guess it's fate. So, you know, us learning more about, you know, whatever's up with the Black Clover and who wielded it previously. Um, so Asta's getting ready to bring the sword down and cut up Noel. But uh, on his left arm stops his right arm, which is holding the Black Clover. Um, we actually have to see that his left arm has no demon power covering it at all. He also starts to bleed from trying to force his arm back. And uh, we, well, first of all, we get something weird with this chapter. And it happened with My Hero Academia, too. The fact that some panels have, like, unfinished artwork. Because we get this panel here, uh, which the Witch Queen is, like, questioning how he's stopping himself. And it's, you know, I mean, it looks kind of cool. You know, in this kind of stylized way, but it's obvious that, that you know this panel just wasn't finished. Um, so uh, Noel's basically gets pissed off. It's like, I won't let you kill me. Just hang in there, Asa. Not a spell. This weak magic. <laughs> um, the witch queen is once again just kind of dumbfounded at how Asa can uh, hold himself back. Meanwhile, the Vanessa, the entire you know, so far this whole chapter, she's just been begging the witch queen to stop. Um, she even states that she'll, you know, never leave the forest again. She won't defy the Witch Queen again, as long as she leaves her friend here. Uh, leaves her friends alone, I mean. And, um, the force of the Witch Queen is like, no, I'm going to wipe all of these people from existence and make sure such foolishness never happens again. Uh, in this another, another amazing unfinished panel. Um, luckily, I believe that's the last time this happens in the, in the chapter. Um... So yeah, so basically she's going on about how uh, her divine vision has told her, you know, like, what would she gain from uh, setting Asta and her friends go? You know, she wants the anti-magic sword. And she basically says, like, you know, you guys can't escape me. I'm going to destroy these imp imperfected people and have you, Vanessa, come back to me, my daughter. Because I... I'm your family, and you are mine. And uh, we get sent to a flashback, and we get to see Vanessa's past here in the witch forest. Apparently, the witch queen literally locked her in a cage like a bird. Um, you know, all she has is a small little window that she can see out of, and she can see all the other witches having fun while she's just kind of locked in here by uh, the witch queen. Uh, by the way, this whole chapter, she uh, in this flashback, she never actually calls the witch queen mother, uh, she always just calls her Your Majesty, so I just kind of took it as, you know, the Witch Queen just kind of kidnapped her from her actual parents. <laughs> but yeah, so we have to learn why the Witch Queen uh, locked her up. Apparently, one according to her divine vision, one day, uh, Vanessa will develop magic that can control fate. And she's going to lock Vanessa up until she can get that power for herself. Um... And of course, Vanessa is just in here like, I just want to go outside. There is no such thing as magic that can control fate. Leave me alone. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, she locks her in here and says, I'll let you out once I am able to choose fate. And you know, I mean, I'm just like, witch queen. I don't have, you know, I, I can, my magic can't control fate. But hey, you can have all the string you want. String! <laughs> so the chapter continues. We see that Vanessa at a young age... Uh, would use her magic to create like string puppets and she would talk to these puppets uh, Basically, she's just like how she wants to leave and the puppets just like oh, no, you can't leave the witch queen's too powerful You can't stop her and Vanessa decides that okay. I guess it's my fate that I'll be living in here um, And then we get to the next part of the story apparently Yami <laughs> Burst in. Uh, we have to see a very young Yami. He's about as uh, he's a little less muscular than he is now, but still way more muscular than an average dude. He doesn't have his uh, beard uh, at this moment, but uh, yeah, it's it's cool, kind of cool seeing a younger Yami. So apparently Yami was fighting someone, probably the Witch Queen herself, outside, and he just got launched into Vanessa's room. 
So Vanessa's just freaking out because she's never seen a man before in his life. Which is kind of funny considering that her character since she was introduced in Black Clover has just kind of been hitting on, you know, uh, Yami and like using her uh, sex appeal to get what she wants. So it's kind of funny seeing her freak out over seeing a man. So uh, Yami asks like what she's doing here and she basically says I've been locked here by her majesty, I can't leave. And Yami's just like, that, su that sucks. Hey, I just opened this big hole in the wall. Wanna leave? <laughs> and of course, you know, Vanessa continues to go on like, you know, it's my fate to stay here. I can't leave. And Yami just goes, ha, ah, yes. Mr. Fate. That guy's a prick. Can't stand it myself. As if I listen to him, I'll just do whatever the fuck I want. So, uh, Yami leaves and Vanessa, she's just like, you know, what should I do? And he's like, decide for yourself. And... As we see, she leaves the witch forest to go and, you know, on her own journey. And we get these nice little uh, flashbacks of Vanessa's time in the bowls. Um, which makes me want to bring up something. Eating dinner with Grey has to be the most awkward thing in the world. But at least before they knew what Grey looked like. Um, so yeah. Uh, you know, it's a very nice flashback. I enjoy seeing, uh, enjoy seeing, especially this one panel here of just all the bulls in their daily life. The bulls are the best characters in this series. I just love them all interacting off of each other. Um, so we cut back to present day, and, the, and basically Vanessa just tells off the witch queen, like, I'm not your family. My family is the black bulls, goddammit. And right before my eyes, I'm about to lose this, this family. And, you know, she's just not going to happen. And then we get to see Vanessa has awakened her new magic. The magic that can change fate. What is it? What will it be? What power is this? It's a kitty cat. <laughs> it's a cute little adorable kitty cat. From what I can tell, a kitty cat made of strings. And the chapter ends with the narrator saying, Vanessa's fate and awakening. The red thread of fate. You know, she's not going to be uh, held back by the Witch Queen anymore. In other words, you could say she's got no strings to hold her down, to make her fret or make her frown. She had strings, but now she's free. There are no strings on her. So I really like this chapter, Unfinished Art or Not. This might be one of my favorite chapters. Vanessa's one of my favorite characters, too. So getting this backstory was nice. Um... As to what's going to happen next week in the 100th chapter of Black Clover. Well, before I get into this, I sort of hope that I hope both Black Clover and My Hero, this unfinished artwork is fixed in the actual volume releases. It probably will be, but, uh, yeah, kind of weird. Guess Shonen Jump rushed the heck out of him this week. But, uh, whatever. Uh, as to what's going to happen next week, next week. So I stated, um, I stated last week that, um, I thought that Noelle would, uh, be the crux of this fight. You know, she would uh, be the one to handle everything. But from what I can tell, it's going to be Vanessa fighting the Witch Queen, maybe even uh, taking on Asta too. Um, you know, despite me loving this chapter, I don't really have much I can say about it. It was very interesting seeing uh, Yami when he was younger, especially considering Yami's backstory is that he was a foreigner who was accepted by uh, Julius. So it's cool kind of have, seeing how his uh, view on fate. Uh, also, I mean, I know it's kind of like, is it, I mean, Black Clover, you know, I'm not going to say they try to rip things off. There's a lot of things in Black Clover that are similar to the series. And uh, Vanessa in her flashback, seeing her talk about fate really does remind me about Neji and the whole destiny spiel when Neji was first introduced. But, you know, unlike Neji, Vanessa is the character I care about. <laughs> so that's the end of the chapter, you guys. And remember... This red string of fate will guide you along. Later, losers. <laughs>